Hello everyone, happy new year, good riddance 2020, and welcome back to my channel. For anyone that's new here, my name's Claire, and I started this channel to bring you everything houseplant related in weekly planty videos. I just want to say I am aware that my hair's wet. I'm only mentioning this because after my packaging plants video, somebody messaged me just to make sure that I knew. So thanks, thanks for that. I, yeah, I, I am aware I didn't just get carried away watering my plants. I, I washed my hair, but thank you for letting me know. Seeing as it's the start of a new year, I thought I would throw a little giveaway competition into this video. I'm giving one of you the chance to win over £70 of amazing prizes, a beautiful Monstera Deliciosa, an Alcacia Poly plant, two decorative pots for both of them, a misting spray, a fertiliser and a Jungle Haven bag. So to be in with a chance of winning, make sure you watch to the end of this video and I will tell you how to enter. This week's video has been a long time coming and is all about the one plant I've probably received the most questions about since starting the Jungle Haven, Fiddle Leaf Figs. Proper name Ficus Lyrata if you're one of those that likes using the fancy Latin names. For this video I'm here with Frida, who is my pride and joy and probably one of the most dramatic plants I've ever known, to hopefully take some of the drama out of Fiddle Leaf Fig Pear and make your life a little bit easier. Once you get used to what they like and don't like, they are actually pretty chilled, low maintenance plants that just like to be left alone to do their thing. But because they don't always give you much warning when they're not happy, they are known as quite a temperamental, difficult plant. Fiddle leaf figs have this reputation of being like the it plant, like being like the trendy plant. They're the ones that you will always see in like interior design magazines, fashion blogs, and they've been hyped up a lot by celebrities on social media over the years as well. The biggest mistake that I have learnt firsthand is buying one just because you think it looks beautiful and not actually doing your research beforehand. I briefly mentioned this in one of my previous videos. I think about that phase that all those celebrities went through when having a fiddly fig was like the trendiest thing ever. Do you see them posting about them anymore? No, because they bought them as a fashion statement and then they killed them. And that just makes me sad. The first thing you really need to think about when you're bringing one of these plants into your home is light. Fiddle leaf figs enjoy lots of bright indirect light. Bright and direct light basically means an area that is going to receive a lot of bright natural light but not too much direct harsh sun. If you do only have a really bright sunny spot then that's fine as well so long as it's got some sort of filter. So for example if you put it by a south facing window, dappled light through a sheer curtain or filtering through the leaves of other highlight plants is absolutely fine too. If you place your fiddle leaf in direct sun for a long period of time without some sort of filter then chances are you'll notice brown patches starting to appear on the leaves and that's essentially sunburn. And knowing how dramatic these plants can be, sometimes that can be enough to just send them into shock and kill them. I've had Frida next to an east facing wind... facing... facing... <laughs> what is going on when I say window? I've had Frida next... <laughs> I've had Frida next to an east facing window. <laughs> Maybe I just don't say where I've had her. Maybe no one needs to know where she lives. I've had Frida next to an east facing window for about seven months now. Um, it does get some direct sun in the morning, but that's not harsh sunlight. It's very, very gentle, but it just remains bright throughout the day and she's really happy there, finally. I've tried her in a few different spots and they do tend to tell you pretty quickly if they're not happy. When I first got her, I put her about three metres away from a north facing window, just because she looked pretty there, which she absolutely hated and threw a hissy fit in the first few days. I know now that that was just poor judgment on my part. She dropped about four leaves at the bottom of the stem and just wasn't happy at all and this was literally within the first week. And that's why people know them as dramatic plants. With most other house plants they might kind of give you a few signs if they're not happy, maybe wilting or curling leaves, but with these ones a lot of the time the signs are a lot more subtle so they'll kind of just make a sudden protest by losing all their leaves and send us into panic mode. And so often when we start to panic we just start guessing what the plant needs instead of actually listening to it. Your fiddle leaf needs to be heard and feel loved, but not too loved. Yeah, she needs her space. You should make sure you're dusting and cleaning your plant's leaves on a regular basis just so that they can absorb all of the natural light that they need. I usually do this every every couple of weeks. I just take a damp cloth and wipe down both sides of the leaves. This is also the best way to prevent pests from infesting your plants. Touch wood, none of my fiddle leaves have ever actually had pests, but I know thrips, spider mites and scale are the ones that tend to affect them the most. Scale especially is 
so 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 gross so just make sure you're checking your plant regularly both sides of the leaves and stems rotating your plant is also really really important not only so that it can look fuller and kind of more even but so that it can absorb light in order to photosynthesize from all angles that really applies to all house plants so many of the common problems that people tend to have with fiddle leaf figs comes down to watering i try to keep the watering schedule for this one fairly regular and consistent just because She's a sensitive girl and doesn't cope well with change. The guideline watering for fiddle leaf figs is every week, but the conditions I've got my one in, I just tend to do it every week and a half or so. It all comes down to the environment of your home, how warm it is, how much light it gets, etc, etc. So any watering instructions should always be taken as a guideline and not gospel. As we all know, and I've mentioned before, root rot is one of the biggest killers in houseplants. And for some reason, these ones are really, really susceptible to it. Root rot happens when the roots of your plant are essentially sitting in water, when it can't drain properly, when it's been overwatered, or if the soil's way too dense and compact. And for this reason, underwatering is always better than overwatering. If you just had deja vu, it's because I've said that many times before, and I'll keep saying it. It is always so much easier to save an underwatered plant as opposed to an overwatered one. Fiddle leaf figs really like the top few inches of their soil to dry out before you even think about rewatering. So if you're not quite sure, if you think, oh, is that dry, is that not? I would advise leaving it for a few days and then checking back. I can more or less guarantee that most fiddle leaf fig deaths come from overloving. And when I say overloving, I mean overwatering. I got my first fiddle leaf fig a few years ago and I remember bringing it home from the garden center being so excited and watering it loads straight away without checking the soil first at all. And it died fairly quickly and I was really sad. Now what I'll always do is just stick my fingers a few inches down into the soil just to feel how dry it is. After you do this, if there's damp soil stuck to your fingers, then you don't need to water again yet. But if it kind of falls away and it feels quite dry, then you're probably good to go for a water. As a general rule of thumb, I always try to use either filtered water or if possible rain water to water my plants, just because the area that I live in, the chemicals and minerals in tap water are just really harsh on your plants. Whatever you choose to use, I'll always make sure that it's either room temperature or lukewarm, just so that it doesn't send them into shock. Because I don't know if I mentioned, they're a tad dramatic. Did I say that already? This is something I do with most of my plants, but I've kept Frida in her plastic nursery pot, which I will just put inside the pretty pots, just so that when I come to water, I can take her out and make sure she's completely drained before I put her back into the pretty pot. The only time I'd say it's okay not to do this is if you're using a terracotta pot, just because they absorb so much of the excess moisture anyway. But even then, it's still so important to make sure it's got a good drainage hole so your roots aren't sitting in water. If you start to notice browny red spots appearing on the leaves, particularly new leaves, then chances are you are overdoing the watering. These spots are something called edema and it basically happens because your plant has absorbed way too much water too quickly and the cells have gone into shock and burst. This is actually totally normal and the spots will usually fade as the leaf matures, but it is just a sign that you can relax a bit with your watering. On the whole, if you've got your plants in a high light spot, it's going to require more water than if it was in lower light conditions. But as I say, just keep an eye on the soil, monitor it and make sure you let those top few inches dry out before watering again. In regards to the type of soil for fiddle leaf figs, the most important thing is to choose something really well draining that heightens the aeration. Because again, this helps to prevent root rot. You basically need to choose something that's not going to become too dense and compact after you've watered each time. So definitely not just pure potting soil. I'll link above the video where I talk about the soil mix that I like to use, but if you don't fancy mixing up a soil potion like mine, some of the things you can add are core, bark, perlite, horticultural charcoal, and you can also buy pre-mixed soil specifically for fiddle leaf figs. These plants also really benefit from higher nitrogen levels compared to a lot of other plants and a really really easy way to do this at home is literally just by taking some used coffee grounds and mixing them into your soil. I have talked about some other things you can do to increase the nitrogen in the soil in another video so again I will link that above. I've already said about turning your fiddle leaf fig but one thing I definitely should have mentioned but forgot to say is that once you've found a spot where they're happy, try not to move them about too much. Because again, surprise, surprise, this is something that can make them have a total meltdown. Even moving Frida away from the comfort of her window for this video felt slightly risky. But she's coping well. I feel like I've probably just jinxed it and she'll be like, <laughs> as soon as the video's finished. I'm kidding, they're not that bad. 
during growing season, which is the spring and summer months, I will tend to use a fertiliser more or less every other time I water. I'll link the fertiliser that I use in the description below. As with most house plants, during the winter months, they kind of go a little bit dormant. They're not popping out new growth at the same rate. So I would say lay off the fertilizer during that time. That being said, whenever I've cooked pasta or vegetables or anything like that, I'll always keep that water to one side and I'll use that to water my plants to just give them a little nutrient boost without sending them into shock. In terms of humidity, they're tropical plants and don't cope particularly well in dry environments, so just make sure they're away from radiators and fireplaces. The humidity in my house is set to about 65%, sometimes a bit more, but I have got a little mini humidifier that will run next to Frida most days just to keep her happy. If you don't have a humidifier, leaving pots of boiling water out or hanging wet clothes across radiators is a really, really great way to naturally raise the humidity. Also just grouping plants together in general helps to raise the humidity for them and kind of gives you an excuse to buy more plants. Temperature wise, they can survive in anything between about 16 and 24 degrees Celsius, but just make sure that temperature stays fairly steady and doesn't fluctuate too much. They really don't do well in cold, drafty areas, so just make sure they're away from air vents or drafty doors and windows. Um, I feel like I have more to say on that, but I can't remember now. Basically, consistency is key for a happy fiddle leaf fig and just try not to fuss over them too much. For a plant that's considered quite tricky, they do just really like to be left alone. Something really important to remember when you're bringing one into your home is to try and make sure the transition into its new environment is as smooth as possible. For example, if you've bought one from a plant nursery, it's probably been used to eight hours plus of light a day in a controlled setting, really high humidity levels, and basically just a really different climate to the one your house provides. For this reason, I'd advise just leaving it alone for a few days and just letting it do its thing as it adjusts, just like a new pet. Don't overwhelm your fiddle leaf with love before it adapts to its new surroundings. Let her come to you. Definitely don't jump in and repot it straight away, or as I did, assume it's really thirsty and give it loads of water. This is a slight side note, but fiddle leaf figs can actually be propagated from cuttings at home quite easily in order to make new plants. They can also be encouraged to branch out, making them fuller or more tree-like by a process called notching. Notching involves making a small cut to the stem just above one of the nodes so that a branch can essentially spring out from there. I won't get too into that now because I know that's more specific, but if that's something you'd like to know how to do, then let me know in the comments below and I will absolutely make a video on it. So to sum up, bright indirect light, wait for the top few inches of soil to completely dry out before rewatering, use a well draining soil and keep at a steady temperature with medium to high humidity and give her her space. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I've decided to host a New Year's giveaway competition, giving you the chance to win these prizes. To be in with a chance of winning, simply like this video, subscribe to my channel and comment down below when you're done. To increase your chance of winning and be entered more than once, simply share this competition on social media and make sure to tag the Jungle Haven so that I can keep track of the entries. Each time you share, it counts as an extra entry, so go crazy! This competition will run until the 1st of February 2021 and is valid for the UK only. And I will announce the winner in my first video of that month. I really hope this was useful. If you've got any questions or suggestions, then feel free to comment them down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to be the first to know when I post new ones. Have a lovely week, all of you, and stay tuned for more weekly plant videos.